friends, today's video is a technique that I'm calling a pop-up background technique and I'm going to um, use the hardwood stamp and the country living stamp. So here's a card I created using this technique and the pattern of the background completely lines up with the pattern in the image that has been popped up. So what you need are two pieces of Whisper White and these both measure five and a quarter by four and I'm going to ink up my background stamp. Now you can use any background stamp as long as when you uh, stamp it on your two pieces they line up. So if you take a bunch of different photopolymer stamps and put them on one clear block to create a background you can do that or just use the background stamp of your choice. So I'm just lining it up in the corner and then when I'm using these big background stamps I like to ink it as you just saw and then I put a piece of scrap computer paper on top give it a little rub and I just find this is the easiest way to use these nice big stamps okay so there's one piece done second piece and of course using the computer paper prevents you from getting ink all over your fingers not that there's anything wrong with that mind you but you don't want to be getting ink on your projects where you don't want it so there you go you can see that both pieces are pretty much identical which is what we want so you're going to set one piece aside and that's going to be um, the front layer of the card. Okay, so on this card I use the boots and on today's card I'm going to go ahead and use the guitar. So I'm going to ink up my guitar using my black stays on. And wherever you stamp on this piece it's where it's going to pop up on your card front. So I'm going to want to consider that. Okay, so that stamp, I'm going to add a little bit of color. I'm going to use my Smoky Slate ink and my Aqua Painter. And I'm just going to add a very light wash because you want that background, that wood grain, to show through the piece that's going to be popped up. So I'm just adding just a tiny bit of color. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the crumb cake. All right. Gonna add a bit more smoky slate. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna cut this out. Now you can use stamp sets that have coordinating framelits, and of course your framelits would do all the cutting. But there's no framelits for this one, so we're gonna trim it out with the paper snips. Okay, so there's my guitar cut out. Okay, so I want to emboss this guitar just to give it some clear shine and shimmer and a little dimension. So I'm just inking the whole piece up using my first mark, taking my clear embossing powder and covering the whole piece. And I'm going to zap it with my heat tool. I'm going to use the tip of my scissors just to hold it down so it doesn't fly away and so I don't burn my fingers. So there's my guitar 
all shiny, pretty fun. The next thing I'm going to do is put my sentiment on my card. And I'm using the One Big Meaning Stamp Set with the Thanks Kindly. Okay, so I'm just going to give a little hint when you're using these clear stamps. Um, I know I've mentioned this in other videos, but you may not have seen it. If they don't stick, put a little bit of waterless hand sanitizer on the block. Usually they're not sticking because there's um, residue, there's oils, there's dirt from our fingers and what have you on the block. So I just wipe it on both sides and a little bit on the stamp. And then I have an old rag, I just dry it off. And I really don't find any problems with my stamps, my clear stamp sticking when I do this. And I just get the waterless hand sanitizer at the uh, dollar store. All right, so I'm gonna put this on my block. Ink it up with my black stays on. Now, before I stamp that, I want to line this up on my card and I can see the marks on the guitar and line it up with the marks on the background so I can tell where that's going to go so that I can place my sentiment perfectly. I actually put it kind of in the center. There we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take my black memento ink and a Stampin' Sponge and sponge the edges of my card. I'm not using the stays on because it dries so fast. I just like the uh, memento ink for the sponging. You could use archival ink or our basic black ink. And now I'm going to go back lightly and go in little circles and get those little corners. So you can see how I've added a little bit more ink on those four corners. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to put this layer on a basic gray card base that I've already sponged the edges with black. And I'm going to take some dimensionals and put them behind the guitar. I want a little piece on the end, so I'm just going to trim the edge of my dimensionals. And if a little bit is on the outside, you're just going to trim that off. Okay, so I'm going to put this on my card base, again, lining up the wood grain with the pattern behind it. So it's actually quite easy with this background because of the lines that are going across. Pretty fun, hey? Right, so the next step is I want to make some little bandanas. So this is some scrap paper from the Succulent Garden Designer Series paper, and I like it because it's got that gingham pattern. So these are both about three quarters of an inch wide. I want one to be a little bit longer than the other. And then I'm just going to cut my little flag portion here. And then this one's going to be a little bit smaller. And do the same thing. Okay, so once that's done, I'm also going to sponge the edges. So 
So I want to add some textures to these pieces. So what I'm doing is taking some water. This is just in an old Stampin' Mist bottle. And I'm misting both sides. And then I'm just going to crumple them up into little itty bitty balls. And then I'm going to uncrumple them. And this will kind of give them a worn, wrinkly kind of look, which is really fun. Okay, now those need to be dried. And I'm going to use the heat tool to dry them. Okay, now that they're dry, I'm going to take my sponge with the black ink on it and lightly sponge on top so that those creases kind of stand out a bit more. Okay, so those are ready to go on the card. Now I'm taking my adhesive. And putting this on the top corner. This one's going to go right on top of that. Then I'm taking my linen thread and I'm going to make two bows. Making the second bow just a little bit smaller than the first one. And then we can play around with it once we put it on here. So I want those to go right on here like that. So I'm going to take a glue dot and put it right behind my first bow. Another glue dot. Then we're just going to trim up the ends. And now I'm just going to take a pearl right in the center. So can you see that wood grain coming through the guitar and lining up with the background? And I'll show you this one that I did the other day and I put the twine behind the boots instead of on the uh, banners. And I was also a bit lighter today with my sponging. You can see the difference when you sponge a bit darker. You get a completely different look. And I played around with this technique earlier today using different stamps. I still use the hardwood but I use different stamps and I want to show you how they turned out. This card is with the Special Reason stamp set with the Coordinating Stylish Stems um, framelits. So the pattern on the flowers coordinates with the background. And I use this thank you stamp which you can get free during celebration on the card. And of course I added some butterflies and some glitter exactly the same technique as these two cards but you see how you get a completely different look and I just lightly washed on color with my aqua painter like I did on here um, for the yellow I used so saffron and I used the blushing bride and mint macaron for the leaves and here's another one I made this morning and I used the best birds stamp set with the coordinating framelits I used the same Thank you from the So Very Much stamp set. And again, you can see the pattern on the bird coordinates and lines up perfectly with the background. So for this card, because I used the framelit once I stamped the bird and cut it out, I had a perfect bird image um, on that second piece of hardwood. So I just turned that into another card. And this one was just playing around. I put a window sheet and I raised this up on Stampin' Dimensionals. I ran this through the um, uh, embossing folder, the wood grain. So I just really played around. So this is what I came up with 
from the scraps from this card and it's amazing how you can go from making one card like this and then coming up with so many different varieties just from you know using different stamp sets and different colors so it's a really fun technique so I really hope you give it a try it's really fun these are great masculine cards too because I know sometimes um, us stampers struggle trying to come up with masculine cards so I'll have the photos and supply list on my blog thank you for watching happy stamping Whoa.